everlasting God and Father, we come before you saying thank you for everything you've done for us, dear God. Thank you for allowing us to meet here today, to gather in your presence, dear God. Dear God, we know that wherever we are here, dear God, you're with us in our midst, dear God. Dear God, thank you for the season that you've given us, dear God. Thank you for allowing your son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for us on the cross so that our sins may be forgiven, dear God. Dear God, as we worship and praise you tonight, dear God, be in our midst, be with us, dear God. Let everything that we do here tonight be pleasing and beneficial to your word, dear God. Let us grow, let us be fruitful. In Jesus' name I do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Can I get a better amen? We are in an Easter concert. Let's do this. Amen. Amen. Uh, first of all, before welcoming the worship team, I'd like us all to stand for a minute. A simple activity. Simple activity. I'll give you a minute to say hi to someone you do not know near you. Walk around, say hi to someone you do not know. Say hi to them. Nice. I like say hi to someone you've not said hi to. Rock 
Jesus. 
lift you up with praise, O God. You are risen high and seated on the right hand of God, where you reign from eternity to eternity. There is no one else but you. You alone deserve to be glorified. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand. Because he's worthy. He's worthy. Yeah. Makofi kwake yesu. Yeah. 
breath. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes.
Hallelujah. The one who defeated the grave. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord. Celebrate him. Celebrate the King of Kings. Celebrate him. Hallelujah. Indeed, he is worthy. And we praise his name. This Lord saying, that we praise the name of the Lord. We acknowledge that he is the King of Kings. We acknowledge that he is the Lord of Lords. We acknowledge that there is no one like the Lord. Hallelujah. Tutuna kusifu Mungu wetu twakuinua Yale uyatenda yo ni makuno Fadhili zako za milele haufananishwi na chochote kiwe uliye mwanzo Chena ni Let's sing that together. Mungu wetu. Mungu wetu tuna kusifu. Tua kuinua. Mungu wetu tua kuinua. Yale unayotenda, yale uyatenda. Oni makuno. Fadili zako za. Mungu wetu tunakusifu Mungu wetu tunakusifu Mungu wetu twakuinu yale yale uyatenda yo makuno Fadhili zako za milele haufananishwi na chochote Iwe ulie mwanzo, tena ni mwisho Unastahili, unastahili Yesu kuabutiwa Kuinuliwa, unastahili Yesu kuinuliwa Kusuju
leo tunasema unastahili hakuna kama wewe bwana Just worship the name of the Lord. He is
sehemu yetu akaweza kulipa ile gharama ya dhambi na kwa sababu hiyo leo tunaweza tukasonga mbele zake tukiwa na ujasiri wote ndani yake kwa sababu aliweza kushinda kifo na mauti akafufuka kutoka kwenye wafu tunaweza tukasongea mbele za Bwana tukiwa na uhakika kwamba Mungu ana uwezo wa kushinda dhambi hata mauti na kwa sababu hiyo mioyo yetu imejawa na shukrani Tukiweza kutafakari na kufikiri jinsi ambavyo Kristo aliweza kuumia kwa sababu yetu Tumenena kwamba yani ali about the circumstances around Christ's crucifixion and even his death and resurrection even as we continue walking in our faith every single day that we will walk and handle our salvation with fear and trembling considering the price at which it came to pigie bwana makofi bwana nasahi tunaweza tukaketi i invite us to sit ah how they done our lovely job Can we appreciate them with a round of applause? We can do better. Let's appreciate them with a bigger round of applause. This is this is yes, watching this. Uh, we, we are about to get to our second part of the service. This is the part where we get our presentations. We do have our junior church junior church in the house let's appreciate the ones who are able to come and i'd like to invite carol to be able to lead us during the presentations the memory verse and the dances let's clap for them let's appreciate them as they come on stage watching life tree kids
front of you is the Egyptian dance team. Luke chapter 24, verse 6 and 7. It says, he is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you when he was still with you in Galilee? The son of man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Luke chapter 24, verse 6 and 7. better than that. A better club for our junior church ministry. In the congregation. Are you having fun tonight? If you're having fun, clap once. If you're having fun, clap twice. Thank you so much for coming to church. Uh, I will jump next to uh, the next stage is if this is your first time in DCKS Kawasukari, kindly raise your hand. If this is your first time to be with us, to fellowship with us. Ooh. People around him, kindly say a hi and welcome him to our church. Karibu sana DCK, yes. Uh, then I'll jump right next to our offer offertory. I'd like to invite the praise and worship team, the ones who are lovely dressed today. Have you seen how marvelous they look? Can we appreciate them as they come on stage? So we'd like to go into this session of giving God our gifts and our offertory. Uh, if, if you have uh, cash, uh, the, but there are baskets right here in front. If you're giving soft money, there is the pay bill. The pay bill is 402-7031. 402-7031. Account number, tithe offering, or whatever you're designating it to. Karibuni sana worship.
that beautiful? Kindly appreciate them one more time. Take this moment to pray for the offertory and our givings. Let us bow our heads for a, word of, a short word of prayer. Everlasting God and Father, we come before you saying thank you for the gifts that you have bestowed upon us, dear God. Dear God, we acknowledge the fact that we are just but stewards of what you've offered us, dear God. Dear God, as we've come to your house, dear God, we have not come empty-handed. We've come with a portion of what you've given unto us, dear God. Dear God, as we give it to the church, dear God, let it be used to further your kingdom. Let your kingdom grow, dear God, so that we may touch and reach everyone in the corners of this earth, dear God. We give the person who will give us the word of the day. Pastor Japheth, karibu sana. Makofi, our youth pastor. Your side, your team is our youth, you can see. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Why don't you appreciate Brian for the leading us very well? Amen. We want to really thank God that he has given us an evening. Hope you found an opportunity to greet someone tonight, even as we about to hear God's word, allow me to appreciate Pastor Anne, who is also with us tonight. I also appreciate my wife, who has also joined us tonight, and we thank God. Amen. And also appreciate all of you for being here. What a joy and a blessing to sit and hear from the Lord. Why don't you again appreciate the worship team? They have done a wonderful and amazing work to put this together and to help us just to worship the Lord uh, this evening. Um, uh, I want to invite... <laughs> Um, Dougie has just decided to, but I want to invite our senior pastor. Uh, uh. Great, and don't we have a wonderful team? Thank you so much. Um, and uh, not yet, we, the evening is still young, uh, they were 10. Isaiah 53 verse 3, the Bible says, He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him with low esteem. Jewish people had handed him over to the Roman soldiers, and quickly through a very hurried and unfair kangaroo courts and trials, he eventually found himself in the presence of Pontius Pilate and Herod, and he was quickly condemned, and now he was headed uh, to Golgotha carrying his cross. And as we have looked at that whole story, uh, we find him now carrying his cross, held by uh, somebody who was volunteered by force, and he is on Calvary tree, and there he dies. So on a night like this one, Jesus has died on the cross. And sometimes when you look at this cross, or another cross, or a chain that has a cross that you put uh, on your neck. Sometimes it's not possible to really appreciate the significance of the cross and the pain uh, of the cross. How do we make sense of a good man who goes to the cross? How do we make sense of someone who healed the sick, raised the dead, fed the hungry, but suddenly uh, people have turned tables against him, and they have, they have shouted that they want Barabbas, and they want Jesus of Nazareth to be killed, even though just a week before, indeed less than a week, they were singing, they were removing their clothes, they were putting palms, uh, palm, uh, palm trees uh, on the floor, and they were removing their coats and their jackets, they would put them on the floor, and they would be singing, Hosanna to the highest. Hosanna property, uh, he was honored by people because he had a lot. Property, uh, he was honored by people because he had a lot around him, and everyone wanted to be associated with him. But as life may be sometimes, uh, he began to fail in the area of business. One business after the other. They were close. He wasn't doing very well. Eventually, he found himself in debt. He needed to feed his family. He had to borrow. He needed to pay um, his rent. He had to borrow. His houses were sold. And he retreated back uh, to the village. But he worked so hard. And as he worked so hard to feed his family um, from here to here, and now struggling, 
Some people got to hear wind of it. And they heard how this man was now humbled uh, for no fault of himself. He had become very weak. He wasn't even feeding well. There wasn't enough food to eat. He was struggling to pay fees for his children. And he had lost everything. Some people got to hear wind of this. And one day, someone showed up. Showed up in his uh, compound and introduced himself. My name is uh, So and So. I have heard about your story. I hear uh, that you have this debt and this other one, and this house is going to be taken by auctioneers, and this other piece of land is going to be sold. I have heard about all that. But I have also heard how hard you work for your family, and how you, you volunteer, and how you struggle, and how with very little you take care of your family family. And he said, I have heard that. And today, I decided, uh, because I, have und I understand this, I was in similar situations in the past, I have decided to come and lend a hand. Of the property I've seen on the newspapers, the debts I have seen, consider them cleared. I'll clear this debt. And this other one, I'll clear. And this other one I have heard. Which other one do you have? And he said, I have this other one. And he had no words. He had no words that someone from somewhere that was unknown, he, he was not a relative, he was not a friend, but God had touched him and he had come to clear his debts. He knelt down, didn't know how to, to cry, to cry or to laugh or to smile. He just said, I am so thankful. And then he just, uh, the, the person who had come to save him from all this, he turned to him and said, well, um, don't try to thank me. I know you don't have enough. But I ask one thing of you, that when you are back on your feet again, that you will do just as I have done. That when you hear someone is in trouble, someone is in debt, you will also do something like that. The passages we have just read today, they paint Jesus doing exactly that for you and for me. And that's why today we look at the subtopic from I want to know Christ in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 that we have been looking at. I want to know Christ. So this night, this Good Friday, we meet Jesus paying our debts. We meet him on the cross. And though we can't make sense of what he is doing there on the cross, we meet him paying our debts. And this evening, just in brief, I will uh, expound on this in three short points. One, our debts. Secondly, our deliverer. And thirdly, our response. Our debts, our deliverer, and our response. So what are our debts? Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 that we just read, especially verse 14, it says, by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Now, God is holy. God is our creator. God is righteous. But a writer has said that God is the biggest victim in all of history. Everyone has sinned against God, and God has sinned against no one. No one. Did you hear that? God is the biggest victim in all of history. Everyone, you and I included, those of us in Kenya, those of us in the United States of America, those of us in Aust Australia, those of us in the, in the nooks and crannies of the world, everyone has sinned against God. So we are debtors of God. We owe Him. 
We owe him. We have wronged him. And if you read in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says that the wages of sin, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Because we have wronged God, we owe him. And the payment, he has quantified our sins, and they, when they are put together, the cost of our sin and your sin is death. When you go back to that Colossians chapter 2, and you read again verse 14, by canceling the record of debt that stood, stood against us and its legal demands. So you are dead to God, and my debt to God is recorded, and it has legal implications. And the legal impl impl implications of your debt and mine is death. That is how serious our debt can take us. It can take us to death. So that's our debt. Now, it doesn't matter how you feel, how you look, what you own, what you don't own. You and I are debtors of God. And the sentence, the payment of that is death. But if that is all, if that is the, where the full stop is, we would be doomed. Thank God is only a comma. It's only a comma because when you go on uh, and you look at that passage even a little more closely, you will find that God provided a deliverer. And so, our deliverer. So you owe like this man in this village. And you can be sold out like that woman in the Bible who owed and then debt the people he, she owed wanted to come and sell her as a slave and sell her children as, as slaves. But what has God done? God, who is owed, has looked at you and me and has actually found, because the sentence is death, all of us would have to die, and he has made a choice. And he has decided... I will send my own son, and he is going to the cross. Instead of Kamau and Jeroge and Wanjiro and Aching going to the cross, I will send them a deliverer. And so Jesus comes down to earth, takes the form of flesh, heads to the cross, and is right there hanging on the cross for you and for me on a Friday like this one 2,000 years ago. He went to the cross so that he can pay the debt for you and praise be to God. When you look at some other passages, like 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, this is what the Bible says, 1 Peter 2, 24, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness, and then by, by his wounds you are healed. He himself. I really like that. He himself. He bore our sins in his body. That is our deliverer. He takes away the load of your sins. He carries your burdens. He takes your pain. And he carries all that in his body. And he walks into Golgotha at the mountain of the skull. And right there on a tree like that one, he hangs there carrying right there on his body all your sins and your debt. He is carrying your debt and he is presenting that debt to his father who is old, who is a victim of being old by you and me. And he is saying to his father, I stand here on their behalf. Please cancel their debt. 
cancel their debt. They ought to be here, all of them. But I have died their death. I have carried their pain. I bring the payment of what they owe to you, Lord. Please forgive them. That is our deliverer. Our deliverer is full of love. Our deliverer leaves heaven and it comes to earth. Our deliverer leaves the beauty of creation that he himself created, comes to walk our earth with our dust, eat our food, be tempted by our temptations, but unscathed, he walks to the cross carrying your debt, carrying your weight, carrying your sins, and he presents all that in his body. If you look back to that passage, um, Colossians, it's just an, an amazing um, an amazing passage, by canceling. So he is at the cross, and he holds, now at the cross, he has a record of our debts. But let me quickly go to our response. So our debt, our deliverer, how should we respond? What kind of people ought we to be in view of a Friday like this one, in view of sins forgiven, in view of a Savior who takes our debts? The book of Isaiah that we read captures, and both Isaiah and Colossians and other passages, they capture what we received what did we receive? And in Isaiah 53, verse number 5, this is what the Bible says. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed. Did you hear that word? He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us, what did it bring us? Read with me. The punishment that brought us, peace. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. What do we receive when our debts are canceled? We receive peace and we receive healing. Through his wounds and his stripes, you are healed. But you can go on to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 11. This is what verse 11 says. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquities. He will justify many. The word justification is a theological word that means that it's as if the way he looks at you now it's as if you have never sinned. He looks at you, though you owed him all these things, and he says, let that person go free. That person has never had any debts. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine somebody coming to you now and saying, if you owe something, if you have a loan in the bank, if you can't feed your family, and he comes and says, this person has never owed anyone. It's like going to CLB and you are listed there as a debtor that you cannot take any other loan because your records are bad. And on the tree, Jesus nails that record right there on the tree. And, and he says, this one has no debts, has never owed anyone any debt. Can I hear an amen if you believe it? That you actually owe no one anything because when Jesus looks at you now through the eyes of the cross, you are righteous, you are justified, you have peace in your heart, and you are forgiven. We could go on and on about uh, what, what we have received, but because we have received all that, then what ought, uh, kind of people ought we to be? I think we ought to be thankful people. We ought to be people who rejoice. We ought to be people who walk right. 
We ought to be people who are thankful. We ought to be people who are dedicated to God over and over. We ought to be people who say, thank you, Lord, for forgiving my sins. Thank you, Lord, that you have loved me with everlasting love. Thank you, Lord, because you have, you have righted my wrongs. My friends, that cross, I think it's uh, uh, Bonke who said that the cross See that beam that looks like a minus? That is what Jesus has done. He has canceled your sins. He has subtracted everything that you didn't, uh, that you had sinned against God about. And he had, and a minus has just become a plus. So you are a blessed person in the beloved. You are now forgiven. You are now righteous. Your minus has become a plus because your debts have been paid. And some of the most significant words at the cross of Jesus were, it is, please help me finish, it is, I can't hear you, it is, in other words, your debts, your bad records, Everything you owed, it's done. Hallelujah. It's done. And so one writer, her name is uh, uh, Mrs. Hall, Elvina Hall. In about 1865, she was attending a service like this one, and the sermon was getting longer like this one, and she was starting to doze the way some of you are dozing, and, uh, and she was getting bored. But as she listened and she was getting a little distracted, she took a pen and looked at her hymn book and there was a, an empty page there. And she began to write a poem because the sermon was so boring and some of you are writing up poems. And she wrote a poem. And in that poem, she wrote something like, I hear the Savior say, even through the long, boring prayer session, I hear the Savior say, thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find me thine all in all. And then in the, in the middle of that uh, poem, she wrote, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. What did he do? He washed it white as snow. Let's say those final words together. He washed it white as snow. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is what Jesus has done. That is a sense of a difficult night like this one. That night that was a tearful night. But today, because of the cross, we call it a good Friday. May the Lord help us as we continue to reflect. Can I have the uh, priest in back here? As we continue to reflect on what God uh, has done, and this final part of our concert, I pray that you reflect. And if the Lord gives you a poem uh, in the middle of a long night, please pen it down. Because this lady penned it down, and then she gave it to her pastor after the service, and the pastor looked at these words, and then went to the organist, and the organist looked at these words, and both the writer and the organist put that wonderful song together, a song that we still sing today to celebrate what Jesus has done. May the Lord be with us this evening as we continue to worship Him together. Amen? Amen. <clears throat>
Okay, uh, we are coming to the ending part of our lovely Easter. If you've, if you've had fun, can you scream and shout? Have you had fun in the house of the Lord? Okay, okay. Now, now it's time for there is it's time for a benediction. Before that, there is a cup of tea, so do not be in a rush to go home. There is a cup of tea that you will get to enjoy. But before we we do pray, I will ask us to walk around saying hi to someone, preferably a stranger, and hold their hand. This is an assignment we are doing tonight. Someone you do not know. Someone you do not know. <laughs> ah. Now while we are while hold, 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 while we are at while we are holding their hands, we are doing a memory verse. A simple memory verse. Hold their hands. Hold their hands. Let's follow the assignment. Hold their hands. We are doing a memory verse. Our memory verse will be a simple one. I won't give a difficult one. We will say the words of John 3.16. Okay. John 3.16. Let's go. John chapter 3 verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting can we do it again but better let's do it again john chapter 3 verse 16 it says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life now we'll say the words of grace while still holding their hands May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of my life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Okay. Uh, you could have your seats for one minute, just one minute, kindly. You could have your seats for one minute. Uh, uh, thank you so much for taking your time to be with us tonight at the Easter concert. My name, the person who was leading the service, is Mutegi Kimadi. Normally, I see people introducing their spouses, but at Jafika Apo, I'd love to, soon, soon, I'd love to introduce my second set of parents. I see them in the house. If they could stand and wave at you kindly. Engineers, wave at them kindly. That is my second dad. And thank you so much for being with us. I'll give it back to the praise team. Thank you. But you
and have a wonderful Easter.